Shakespeare's play, The Winter's Tale, believed to have been penned between 1609 and 1611, is conventionally classified as a romance. Some critics have advocated for the designation tragicomedy, a hybrid that contains some elements of comedy and some elements of tragedy. The play is comprised of five acts. In act one, Leontes, the king of Sicilia, has been hosting his lifelong friend Polixenes, the king of Bohemia, for the past nine months. Observing his friend and wife Hermione, Leontes is suddenly taken by fits of jealousy. He believes that he's been cuckolded and that his wife is pregnant with a bastard child. He consults Camillo, a nobleman in his court, who correctly sees Leontes' aggravation as delusional and tries unsuccessfully to reassure the king. A spider in a drink is a strange symbol that's presented here. In Act 2, Scene 1, Leontes uses an implied extended metaphor to capture memorably the baneful effects of jealousy. This image involves a man who drinks from a cup containing a hidden spider. If the drinker remains oblivious of the abhorred ingredient, he remains uninfected. If, on the other hand, he glimpses the spider, he is repelled and physically nauseated. I have drunk and seen the spider, reflects Leontes. Leontes orders Camillo to poison Polixenes. Camillo warns Polixenes of the plot on his life and aids the Bohemian king and his attendants in escaping, abandoning his life in Sicilia. In Act Two, outraged at the betrayal, Leontes accuses Hermione of aiding Polixenes and of adultery. Growing more delusional, he accuses her of taking part in a plot against his life. He has her arrested and taken to prison. While living in prison, Hermione gives birth to a girl. The Lady Paulina takes the girl to the king's court in the hope that seeing his daughter will soften Leontes' heart. Instead, Leontes orders the baby to be burned alive. When Paulina's husband, Antigonus, offers to redeem the baby's life with his own, Leontes agrees, but then orders Antigonus to take the child and abandon her in the wilderness. In Act 3, Leontes holds a trial regarding his wife's supposed adultery and treason. At this trial, the Oracle of Apollo is consulted, which proclaims Hermione's innocence and prophesizes that Leontes will remain without an heir if that which is lost be not found. Leontes declares the Oracle false. Immediately thereafter, a servant reports that Leontes' son, Mamelius, has died. Hermione then collapses and is carried off stage. Paulina, furious, bursts into the room to report that Hermione, too, has died. Leontes, totally <laughs> distraught, repents and vows to do penance for his various wrongdoings. Antigonus takes the child, who he names Perdita, to the coast of Bohemia, where he follows Leontes' order and abandons the child in the wilderness. Perdita herself is one of the play's main symbols. Her name means she who was lost. She thus symbolizes the life-giving innocence and potential that Leontes expelled when he condemned her to exposure and death. The symbolic significance of Perdita's name is foreshadowed in Act 3, Scene 2, where the oracle at Delphos is reported to warn that Leontes will remain without an heir if that which is lost be not found. Shortly after abandoning the baby, Antigonus is chased off the stage and killed by a bear, and the ship he took is wrecked in a storm, killing the sailors. This storm is one of the play's key symbols, too. Violent storms are often symbols in Shakespeare for anarchy or chaos. The storm here might thus be associated with Apollo's displeasure. The shepherd finds Perdita, along with riches and a letter explaining her origin left by Antigonus, who raises her as his own daughter. In Act 4, after 16 years pass, Perdita is being courted by Florizel, the son of Polixenes. The king of Bohemia has become aware of his son's dalliance, so he and Camillo go in disguise to meet the girl in question and her shepherd father at the sheep shearing festival. Perdita expresses her fear that the king will forbid their relationship because of her lower status. Florizel protests that he will not be stopped, insisting on making a formal betrothal right there on the spot. Polixenes, disguised, asks the youth to delay this action and speak with his father first. When Florizel refuses, Polixenes reveals himself, forbids the marriage, and storms away. Camillo, wanting to return home to Sicilia, but also wanting to help the young lovers, devises their escape to Sicilia, where he believes the penitent Leontes will shelter them. Meanwhile, the thief Autolycus, disguised as a courtier, convinces the shepherd and his son, the clown, to pay him to intercede with Polixenes. In 
In Act 5, in Sicilia, Leontes has committed his life to penance and has sworn to Paulina that he will not remarry without her consent. He happily receives Florizel and Perdita, and he offers to speak for them to Polixenes, who arrives shortly thereafter. In action narrated by various gentlemen, the truth comes out that Perdita is Leontes' lost daughter. This clears the way for Florizel and Perdita to marry, now that they are considered of equal status. Upon these happy reunions, Paulina invites the kings and their progeny to view the statue of Hermione that she's commissioned. They all marvel at the lifelike statue, although Leontes remarks that it seems much older than his wife was when she died. And this statue of Hermione wondrously comes to life and is one of the outstanding symbols in the play. Standing for the fusion of art and life, or nature, the statue also suggests rebirth, the reawakening of faith, forgiveness, and the marvelous gift of love. The statue of Hermione is a variation on a well-known tale in Ovid's collection of ancient myths, the Metamorphoses, the myth of Pygmalion and Galatea. In the story, the sculptor Pygmalion creates a statue of such beauty that he falls in love with his own creation. The goddess Aphrodite miraculously brings the statue to life. Numerous references show that Shakespeare was familiar with Arthur Golding's English translation of Ovid, printed in 1567. The play closes as the king and his wife are reunited and Leontes invites Camillo to take the widowed Paulina as his wife. Seasons, succession, storytelling, and festivity are the play's main motifs readers and audiences likely picked up on. Often mentioned in The Winter's Tale, the cycle of the seasons is closely related to the themes of nature and time. The seasons symbolize the ongoing, steady activity of natural processes. In the course of the play, the sad tale told for winter morphs into a celebration of summer, as dramatized in the sheep shearing festival of Act 4 and the reconciliations of Act 5. Both Leontes and Polixenes are preoccupied with the issue of succession in Sicilia and Bohemia. Leontes, stricken with jealousy, anxiously contemplates the legitimacy of his son Mamelius in Act 1, Scene 3. In the stern prophecy of Apollo's oracle at Delphos, reported in Act 3, Scene 2, Leontes will remain without an heir if that which is lost be not found, an allusion to Perdita. In Act 4, Scene 4, Polixenes threatens to disinherit his son Florizel, barring him from succession because of his betrothal to a seeming commoner. Happily, the issue of succession is settled with the revelation of Perdita's identity, which provides Leontes with an heir and Polixenes with a suitable wife for his son. The idea that the Winter's Tale resembles an old story or a sad tale draws attention to its elements of fantasy and its romantic conventions. Storytelling is a central motif in the Winter's Tale, and the device first appears in Act 2, Scene 2, when Hermione and her ladies-in-waiting urge the young Mamelius to tell them a tale, the sad tale of sprites and goblins, best suited to the winter season. It ties in imaginatively to the story of Leontes' family. Storytelling is also prominently mentioned in the conversation of the three gentlemen in Act 5, Scene 2, when they say that the improbable rediscovery of Perdita is like an old tale. Finally, the motif of festivity undergirds Act 4, Scene 4, which is the longest scene in the play. The explicit occasion is the Sheep Shearing Festival, a community-wide celebration devoted to feasting, music, dance, and jests. The famed play also contains three notable themes, Time's Passage, art and nature, and death and rebirth. In The Winter's Tale, time clearly plays a prominent role from the very beginning of the play, when Polixenes frets that he has been absent from his kingdom for a full nine months. Also, not coincidentally, the gestation period for the pregnant Hermione, whom Leontes accuses of adultery. Time is often viewed as ominous or burdensome in Shakespeare. In his soliloquy in Act 5 of Macbeth, for example, the protagonist emphasizes the petty pace from day to day, stretching out to the last syllable of recorded time. However, in The Winter's Tale, time is mostly beneficent. The 16 years separating the two parts of the play is a period of penance for Leontes and of maturation for Perdita and Florizel. Time's passage makes atonement and perspective possible, and even allows for a partial sense of rebirth. It's notable that the subtitle of Robert Greene's Pandosto, Shakespeare's principal source for the play, was The Triumph of Time. The personified figure of time, taking on the role of an ancient Greek chorus, delivers the prologue to the second half of the play in Act 4, Scene 1. The play dramatizes the convergence of art and nature, 
thematic intersection that culminates in the final scene. In Act 4, Scene 4, Polixenes speculates on the union of art and nature when he explains to Perdita the grafting of different varieties of flowers. This is an art which does mend nature, change it rather, but the art itself is nature. Polixenes' words are breathtakingly fulfilled in the statue scene of Act 5, Scene 3, when the sculptor's extraordinarily vivid image of Hermione actually comes to life. Even before her restoration, the image of Hermione is striking. The fixture of her eyes has motion in it, marvels Leontes, as we are mocked with art. Finally, death and rebirth is a theme abundantly clear by the middle of Act 3, when the destructive effects of Leontes' jealousy are clear. Both Mamilius and Hermione are reported dead. Death is also the expected fate of the infant Perdita. In Act 3, Scene 3, however, when the compassionate Antigonus exposes the baby on the shore of Bohemia, she is rescued by the shepherd and his son, the clown. These two characters mark the turning point of the play, when the shepherd says, Thou metst with things dying, I with things newborn. After the death of Antigonus and the Sicilian Mariners, the play highlights rebirth, reconciliation, and forgiveness. Perdita and Florizel are united. Leontes is reconciled with Hermione. Perdita, Polixenes, and Camillo. And Hermione is symbolically at last reborn. For many years, the Winter's Tale was ignored by theatrical producers, who apparently assumed that the play contained too many challenges for effective performance. According to one theater historian, the play's problems included the time gap of 16 years between Acts 3 and 4, the fatal and arguably comical attack on Antigonus by a bear, and the miraculous statue scene in the culmination of Act 5. A Winter's Tale has recently served as a springboard for the fertile imaginations of actors, directors, and set designers, and remains a notable example of Shakespeare's tragicomic styling.